Welcome to FinTech Confidential, bringing you the people, tech, and companies that change how you pay and get paid. It's kind of like your first job, you know, everybody has to have a first job. Everybody has to have a first financial product to develop a credit history. That's ultimately where people are going to be successful in the space. The idea of the DDA not being that primary driver of that relationship, really make it a lifetime customer, not I need it now type customer. We've been around since 1962, obviously in the past five, 10 years, more alternative data coming in and more opportunity to understand your customer base. It's really about finding the people that are falling through the cracks. Products have gotten into a little bit of regulatory hot water was just around over-promising and under-delivering with what they can do. Companies that are maybe viewing that as a major profit center are approaching it the wrong way. Exceptional customer service and continuing to offer them products that meet them where they are. They were there for me when nobody else was. Here's a quick message from the Accrued Series sponsor. As default rates continue to rise and margins compress in lending, financial organizations are searching for solutions to combine that operational efficiency with innovation. Look no further as LoanPro allows lenders to enhance their origination, servicing, collections, and payments using the foundation of a modern lending core. Check out LoanPro.io to learn more about how over 600 financial organizations have modernized their tech stack with LoanPro. Welcome to Accrued, the FinTech Confidential Series presented by LoanPro. In this series, we're deconstructing the complexities of lending and exploring compliance, optimization, modernization, and personalization through insightful conversations with the industry's best. I'm Ted Huff, and with my co-host Colton Pond, we'll be guiding you through the intricate lending world. Whether you're deep into lend tech or just intrigued by how the technology is reshaping lending, you're in the right place. And now, let's dive into another episode of Accrued. Colton, this, we're, we're out here on the Salt Flats at the Strategic Advisory Board event. I don't think I've ever done a podcast in an environment like this before, but I'm super stoked to be sitting down with Ben Boyer today to, to see what's going on in his world. Yeah, let's let's dig in. Ben, stoked to have you. Ben leads uh, new product development at World Acceptance, um, and excited to have you here. Welcome, Ben. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I want to start off by just understanding from your perspective. You guys have been in in the business of, of providing installment loans. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing the market doing, and how is that impacting the way that you're looking at moving the business forward? Yeah. So I think, you know, we've been around since 1962. Um, we've been doing installment loan lending. So I think we've really kind of focused on what I think our key principles are, which is how can we help our customers and how can we provide them with the financial services that they need for wherever they are on their financial journey. And so I think throughout time, you know, obviously since the 60s, there's been boom periods and there's been bust periods. There have been plenty of companies that have come and gone. But I think we've really just tried to focus on how can we help serve our customers and how can we give them what they need? And if we can do that, we're ultimately going to be successful regardless of what the economic climate is. Yeah. So one of the key themes on that note, Ben, and we've chatted a good amount it here at Strategic Advisory Board, is the shift from organizations on offering one product mm -hmm. to expanding. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned, you lead new product development. Mm -hmm. Help us understand as you think about new product opportunities, mm -hmm. how do you prioritize what to go after and what that looks like? I think it's really about putting yourself in the customer's shoes and asking yourself, what do they need? You know, it's, it's easy for us to sit in meeting rooms and, and try to whiteboard out all these products <laughs> that we could come up with that, that we think would be cool. But, you know, we're not always the customers that we're serving. So we have to put ourselves in the customer's shoes and say, what do our customers need when they walk into a branch and they come into a website? What are they looking for? at us to be able to help serve them with and how can we expand upon that to to really help them grow their financial future yeah and what's the job to be done right like mm -hmm. what jobs and pain points do they have what do they need us to solve and what i love about the shift from being uh, a lot of organizations uh one product to multi-product and increasing mm -hmm. share of wallet is exactly what you said. If mm -hmm. you can better serve the needs of the consumer, mm -hmm. that's good for everyone, especially the consumer. Right, absolutely. How are you looking at moving 
the company forward and, and where is an area you see as an opportunity for the market to serve your customers better? Yeah. So I think for us, it's about, you know, having products that cater to our customers as they continue to progress up the uh, financial journey that they're on. So really looking to how can we start with a customer who maybe has a really, really thin file or, you know, has some major derogatories on their credit reports. And how can we continue to offer them products that are going to be appealing to them and are going to be competitive with what they could get in the market right there? Because once we have a customer who's demonstrated that they have the capability to pay and be a good customer, we, we don't want to lose them to somebody else who's going to offer them a, a product that we can't. So we want to have, you know, products that will compete and be good products that they want to have. I make the cliche joke all the time, you know, we're probably never going to have airport lounges um, <laughs> and be serving the, you know, the millionaires and the billionaires of the world with super prime offerings. But, you know, we want to be able to have somebody come in uh, very early on in their journey and stay with us, uh, you know, for, for as long as they want to. Yeah. Colton, you know, what's interesting is I hear Ben talk about this is that a lot of the conversation that we've heard today with the attendees as well as uh, the folks that are sharing their their knowledge has been the idea of the DDA not being that primary driver of that relationship. And what I'm hearing from Ben is that they're taking that step to continue to extend that relationship beyond that installment loan, beyond those pieces and really make it a lifetime customer, not I need it now type customer. I mean, it, this is a great point and one that's, as I pressure tested it with people, a relatively controversial topic actually, because I personally view my, uh, so my, I'll share a little bit about my financial life. <laughs> my direct deposit goes into both US Bank and SoFi, but I actually don't consider my relationship with either of them. I consider my primary relationship actually with American Express. Same here. All my transactions go through American Express. Uh, sorry, like uh, <laughs> airport lounges and things like that. The world fine. doesn't care. But yeah. they know way more about me mm -hmm. than yes. US Bank or SoFi. They see every single transaction in my life. Um, and along those lines, um, when we think about uh, you all at World and think about the credit builder mm -hmm. has been a hot topic for fintechs, for mm -hmm. regulations, mm -hmm. for a variety of different ways. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the future of credit builder and building credit is going? Where those products have gotten into a little bit of regulatory hot water um, or are starting to is just around over-promising and under-delivering with what they can do with regards to improving a customer's credit, yeah. depending on how they come in and also how quickly they can do it and how much they cost. And I think a lot of companies that are maybe viewing that as a major profit center are approaching it the wrong way. Yeah. We view those products as introductory products to really get to know the customer and hopefully grow them into other products um, that are going to have higher profit margins. But, you know, we view those products as, you know, hopefully they're not lost leaders. Hopefully you can break even on them. Uh, but we're not looking to generate massive amounts of revenue off of, you know, really the entry level products. That's that's really about generating customer demand. Uh, how do you make sure that you keep the customer after that first experience? Support provided by Skyflow. What if you could build fast but not break privacy? What if you could ensure data privacy, governance, and compliance with just a few API calls? What if you could worry less about PCI requirements while actually improving privacy and security? How much more time would your team have to truly innovate? How much faster could you build and ship new features? How much more powerful could your app be? Skyflow is a zero trust data privacy vault delivered as an API. Skyflow's radically simple design lets you collect, secure, and tokenize personal information like card data and payment details. And with built-in features like encrypted data analysis and sharing, anonymization, and advanced governance, your days of choosing between data security and data usability are over. Whether you're just concerned with PCI compliance or need to go further to include CCPA, GDPR, SOC 2, and beyond, Skyflow has you covered. What if you could build fast but not break privacy? With Skyflow, you can. Visit skyflowsecure.com today to learn how. It's really about providing them with exceptional customer service and continuing to offer them products that meet them where they are on that cycle. And I think if you can do that, if you can find a way to have a really good relationship with the customer where they're not out looking for other financial products. And when you offer them something, they say, hey, I like these guys. I've got a good relationship with them. They were there for me when nobody else was. 
uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep everything with them. You know, it helps if they have their logins and, sure. and everything already set up and they don't want to reset those. It's easier to stay um, with who you want to. But I think that's really our goal is to, to be the company that you want to stay with. And then pricing becomes less of a factor mm -hmm. because I know that I've had my personal loan with the world mm -hmm. and they've treated me well. Mm -hmm. I, when I had a tough time and I, I lost my job, mm -hmm. they were there and helped me through that uh, opportunity rather than saying, yeah, call me when you're 90 days delinquent and we'll chat about options, right. which is a far different uh, approach. Yep. And then Colton, with, with you talking about being there and, and any menu you said, meet them where they're at, what are some of the approaches that you take to make sure you're there mm -hmm. and you're meeting them there where they're at, even mm -hmm. if they don't know mm -hmm. that they're there already? Yeah. I, I think it's about, you know, understanding the customer having interactions with the customer and, and to your point, educating the customer, um, about, you know, what things they might be able to get at, at this point in their financial journey and, and what it looks like to get there. Really, when I think about what the future of the fintech landscape looks like and, and product offerings, you know, we, we were talking and somebody mentioned, you know, and this is a frustration that I know I had for a really long time is, you know, there's not really a good budgeting app that says if I have a hundred dollars, in my bank account and I get paid X amount every two weeks and I have these expenses, like, am I going to run out of money? If so, when, how much money do I need? You know, if I add in this additional thing, what's that going to do to the budget? So I think people that can deliver that type of education and common sense conversation to the customer to say, Hey, this is what it looks like. This is what you need to do. Here's how you can get there. And yes, you, you can do this. You can be control, in control of your financial future and you can succeed. The people who can tie those conversations into the right products for those customers are the ones that are ultimately going to succeed and win. Yeah. Uh, lastly, on that note, uh, key aspect there is understanding the customer through the data that you have and offering personalized products mm -hmm. to meet them where they're at. And that's a lot, as, as we've met Ben, that I've seen... Uh, you've been a you're able to do and go on the journey of, hey, where are my mm -hmm. customers and how else can I help them? Right. Um, and how can I help them on the journey to what they want to achieve? Because ultimately, every consumer doesn't want to be in debt. And in the end, lenders need to help customers fulfill their goals, which is right. to get out of debt. Right. One last question. Okay, because, let's go. Because Ben, as you and I were walking over, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, was, I was kind of at, I was asking a couple of questions to better understand where you guys were at. And I think the the piece that, that was brought up is, is the credit worthiness piece of it. Mm -hmm. And I want to know from your perspective, how do you see the way we evaluate mm -hmm. that worthiness, mm -hmm. especially for the upcoming products that you all are working mm -hmm. on? How is that changed and mm -hmm. or changing in the next couple of years? It's changed a lot. You know, obviously in the past five, 10 years um, with, you know, more alternative data coming in and more opportunity to understand and know more about your customer base um, through, you know, platforms like Finicity and Plaid and, and those types of things. And I think that's the direction that it's ultimately going to continue to go in. And, and the more information you can get about your customer's behavior and spending habits and, and patterns for things and the more complete picture you can form about your customer without having to be entirely reliant on a backwards looking credit score. Um, that's always going to be a trailing indicator, which obviously those are fantastic products and they've served the market for a really, really long time, but everybody has access to the same credit scores and everybody knows what everybody else is targeting from an underwriting model. So it's really about finding the people that are falling through the cracks of the large organizations that, that they just don't care about figuring out how to find the right customers out of those populations and serve them with with quality products. Uh, one of the aspects, a uh, final thought on one of the conversations I had today, if you think about FICO score, mm -hmm. it is one score mm -hmm. for the broader population. It's actually done a pretty damn good job mm -hmm. at being relatively representative. Mm -hmm. When you say, this is a score for everyone. Yep. Everyone, it works, right? right. Uh, but where I see differentiation, what you're talking about is how do you take segments of the mm -hmm. overall population and even your customer base mm -hmm. and find alternative data that helps better inform mm -hmm. credit worthiness, mm -hmm. ability and willingness to repay yep. and what uh, uh, portfolio performance will look like? Yeah. And how do you find low risk products that credit worthiness is, is even less of a factor? Yep. How do you give the customer base that has 
no credit history whatsoever, the opportunity to prove themselves. You know, it's, it's kind of like your first job. You know, everybody has to have a first job. Everybody has to have a first financial product to develop a credit history. And how do you come out with products that that can meet those customers while also not generating a tremendous amount of risk for your company? I, th I think that's ultimately where people are going to be successful in the space and we're hoping to be successful in the space is is don't over promise and under deliver and you know be honest and upfront with your customers and help them i mean that's that's what we're all in the business to do and there's been a lot of conversation about that here at this meeting is you know we're all in this business to help our customers and serve them if you lose sight of that you can get yourself in trouble and so my hope is that we can just make sure that we never lose sight of that I agree thanks for the time ben really appreciate thanks. it thanks well folks that does it for another episode of accrued if you've made it this far go ahead like share subscribe all that fun stuff and don't forget to sign up at fintechconfidential.com to be alerted on your favorite episode coming up next and as always keep moving forward as we wrap up today's episode, I've got one last thing for you. If you're in the trenches fighting fraud and financial crime, you know it's a complex battlefield. That's where Hawk's AI tools for real-time payment screening, AML, transaction monitoring, and dynamic customer risk rating come into play. These aren't just buzzwords, they're game changers designed to make your compliance more effective and less of a headache. Imagine slashing through false positives with precision and giving your compliance strategy the edge it needs. Head on over to gethawkai.com to sign up for a demo and discover how their platform can revolutionize how you fight fraud and financial crime. This has been a production of DD3 Media with all rights reserved. This is provided for informational purposes only. It is not offered or intended to be used as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. We strive to provide accurate and up-to-date information, but will not be responsible for any missing facts or inaccurate information. You comply and understand that you should use any of this information at your own risk. Cryptocurrencies are highly volatile financial assets, so research and make your own financial decisions.